So all of this crap that continues to come out. Oh yeah, which around... crap, Eric? Which crap would that be? <laughs> well, no, we got to be more specific. Well, since we've talked about this the last time, specifically Kevin Spacey, Brett Ratner, and Dustin Hoffman, that crap uh, that's kind of coming out, it's getting it. It's getting overwhelming. There should be a pool. I feel like there should be a pool, right? Because I actually have friends. I have a friend who predicted Dustin. Uh huh. And they've predicted somebody else. Yeah, I there's a director that's in my mind, and I'd say his name, but I don't want to get that's sued. Thing, who's going that... down? He'll be next. Yeah. I, you know. And I, as I said, this person has another one in mind, and I, it's it's an actor director, but it's one of those where, uh, and I guess it's about time. Yeah, I think it's great. Oh, it's past actually. Time, probably. I think it. It while well, while it's dis like when I saw the Dustin Hoffman news, I will I would admit I was sad. Very sad. I was just like, damn it, Dustin. You know. But I read the report. This woman kept diaries the entire time, shared them with friends. Her friends confirmed, yeah, this is not news. Like I heard this when it was going on, and she felt powerless to do anything, so she didn't say anything. So I completely trust. That that's a real story. And, you know, so far with Dustin, it's one. With Kevin Spacey, I knew. Okay, for can, can we just... The openest secret that ever opened or secreted, Kevin Spacey. Everyone in the gay community knew he had a thing for underage boys. I didn't know. Oh, all... It, it was just... it. Everybody knew. So it was just like, when that came out, it was like, oh, this is going to be an avalanche. This is not going to be just one right. story. And it goes away. Anyway... It's, it's going on and on and on. We're not going to do a show about that because we're not show business no. people. We don't live in Hollywood. No. Um, but we're taking this week off. And instead of just letting your weekly dose of poperation go unfulfilled. Instead letting you choose. <laughs> <laughs> we thought we'd do a little bit of a rerun. So this is one of the very first shows we ever did mm-hmm. back when we were still recording in my kitchen. Okay. So. Um, <laughs> uh, before we before we Quality got this apology. lovely studio space. Oh, you know it's fine. Um, and this was a show where where I did a little bit of research and and talked a little. We talked a little bit about the way that that women actually kind of get sidelined even on screen. Um, and as I'm thinking about all this stuff that's going on in Hollywood, it just kind of makes me think. You know, if we got more women in charge of studios, on in casting rooms. Uh, in writers' rooms on TV, if we just were able to up the number of women that were there, I think there would be not only better working conditions for actresses, I think there would be more representation on screen as well. I think anytime you get more diversity as opposed to less diversity, you're going to have a better quality and something that is going to be relatable to more people, obviously. And I think that that I agree 100% with what you just said. And we do talk about this in this episode. And again, our hearts go out to people, but I'm just saluting all the bravery that's happening. And there's going to be more bravery coming out. I, that's where I think we are so. Right now. And I think we have to continue to be welcoming of it. I think we have yep. to say every time somebody comes out with one of these stories, it's disappointing maybe because yep. you might have been a fan of this person. But you go, girl yep. or boy. Yep. You know, shout out to Anthony Rapp, too. I that's mean, he huge. didn't have to do that. It that's was, huge. you know, and he could have he could have very yep. easily just been cut off from his show and Hollywood could have said, no, thank you. But instead, it's going the other right. way. And that's that's positive. And while this does seem to be, you know, it, this is it's valid because it's pop culture, unfortunately. And that's what we're talking about. And that's that's why we bring this up as, as much as it's not a necessarily a fun topic. Yeah. So. Um, all right. So enjoy this this historical walk down memory lane. <laughs> And we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. When the chaos of popular culture makes your brain hurt, you really need relief in the form of a transfusion of analysis and humor. It's time for a poperation. Join hosts Eric and Stacy as they dissect pop culture one bloody organ at a time. It's just what the doctor ordered. Hello, I'm Stacy, And I'm Eric. And this is Poperation. What are we talking about today, Eric? So what we're talking about today is, here's the thing, I did a Google. I went on Google. Stop it! I You're did. crazy! I did. I'm nuts. And I was really interested, so I work in the field of diversity and inclusion, and I got really interested in how different groups are perceived mm-hmm. through this lens of pop culture. And I read a couple of articles that that talked but really shocking data about how women are so underrepresented in media. And we knew this already. Yeah. But when you see the data, it's bad. Yeah. So we really wanted to talk today about how women specifically are underrepresented in movies, music, TV, mm-hmm. the rest of it. 
So let's start with the movies because, you know, the movie, they're the dream factory, right? So that there's kind of where we go to kind of, you know, I think television shows us sometimes, you know, who we are. Movies tend to be a little bit more aspirational. Have you ever heard of the Bechtel test? I feel like I've heard it, but you're going to have to tell okay, me. Okay, I'm going to have to tell you what it is. The Bechtel test was made famous by a woman named Alison Bechtel, who uh, is a lesbian cartoonist who used to write this this cartoon strip that appeared in a lot of gay papers called Dykes to Watch Out For. Mm -hmm. And in this strip, there are these, uh, at one point, you know, back, back, back in the probably the 70s, these two women were having a conversation. And one of them said, I don't like any movie that doesn't feature at least one scene where there are two women who talk to each other about something other than a man. <laughs> and based on this, this cartoon, they developed this thing called the Bechtel test. And if you pass the Bechtel test, it means that you have at least one scene mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. where there are two women who speak to each other about something, something other, other than, than a, a man. man. So many movies fail this test. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. So, so just you know, uh, weird science. Interestingly, most with the most oh, misogynistic movies actually God. passes the test, and here's why: because there's two girls at a party where the the robot girl shows up talking about how pretty she is and how jealous they are of her. That passes. Okay. How did? Mm. No, oh. but this just goes to show what a oh. low bar this is. That is All a that, really low bar. It's a really low bar, and so when you consider how low that bar is, to it's fail kind of, it to, is... To, to fail it is so the entire Star Wars trilogy, the original, fails the Bechtel test. Guess what? Because Leia doesn't talk to any other women. Yeah, she's the only girl. In, through the entire she's the only movie. Girl. I mean, Luke's got an aunt somewhere on the desert planet, and but she's... never meets Leia. No, and then there's dead. one other character. She's dead by the time we get to Leia. Mom is, but by the time no, we get to Leia. No, that's his aunt. By the time we get to Leia, yeah. yeah but yeah. there are other women in the film, but barely, and they don't talk to any other women. So Wait women a minute. are not having And the first Star Wars, doesn't she have a conversation with the general when they're over, when they're looking at that? No, it's the boy general is there. The girl yeah. general isn't there. No, she doesn't talk to women. And if she does, I just looked this up on, you know, there's, there's a place where you can look up all the movies, who, whether they pass the Bechtel test or not. If she does, so Avatar, biggest grossing movie yeah. of all time, failed the best Bechtel test. Mm -hmm. There's one scene where a mother and a daughter speak to one another, but it's all about whether she should marry the dude. Right. And so right. fails the test. The entire Lord of the Rings trilogy <laughs> fails the Bechtel test because the women don't talk to each other. Right. In this, it's so male heavy, and the guys yes, are obviously talking to each other too. about yeah. everything. Yeah. But yeah, uh, two women could talk to each other about lipstick, and it would pass it would the Bechtel test. test. So it's a very low bar. Very low now, bar. obviously, it doesn't really mean anything unless you kind of look at the, I guess you'd call it the anti Bechtel test. You know, is there a scene in a movie where two men talk to each other about something other than a woman? And just about every movie has that scene in it. Most, I mean, yeah. I mean, almost every movie you can think of has, of course, you know, has a scene where... Because they have to talk about important stuff. Yeah. That's why, I mean, that's that's the, the idea, obviously. I don't yeah. really believe that. But that's the whole idea is that this is women, this is men, this is... You know, men talk. You don't need to concern yeah. yourself. Don't pretty, don't bother your pretty little head over. So on the Internet Movie Database, imdb.com, of the top 250 movies on that site by user ratings, how good the movies are, only 88 of them pass the Bechtel test. So 88 out of 250 movies actually pass that here, really low okay. bar. And here's here's my problem. This is here. I I want to be shocked. Okay, I want to be just so appalled and like, mm -hmm. you are lying to me, Eric. There's no way that that's true. I can't, though, yeah. because I'm sitting here thinking and I'm going, I don't know that Titanic passed. I don't know. Because she talks to her mother, but aren't they always talking about dude, her fiancé? Probably, or Leo. Or Leo, yeah. who, the guy she should be marrying or the guy she isn't marrying. Yeah. I mean, yeah. shouldn't be marrying. So I'm like, even in Titanic, we'll look it up and see. Maybe the grandmother, the grandmother when she's an old broad and with her granddaughter, they okay. talk probably not about a guy, or unless they're talking about Leo, or they're talking about the stone. So that yeah. may that may pass, <laughs> but I'm like, I, but I, I'm sitting yeah. here thinking. Um, so in 2016, you know, half of the movies that had a major release passed. So 50 percent, which is you know better than the 88 out of 250. Yeah. But come on, I mean. 
it's such a low bar. It's such an incredibly low bar. And you know what? If a movie doesn't pass, it doesn't necessarily mean it's an anti feminist Because guess what, guess what else didn't pass? Gravity. That great movie with, with Sandra <laughs> because Bullock. There's you not know, another, because there's because, the, Right, the guys Because that there's no other people. To, yeah. Like, she only talks yeah. to George Clooney, and then, right. you know, spoiler alert, he goes away. Yeah. And then she's the only person in the movie. Right. And you could say that's a great feminist statement. Probably is. I, I mean, I guess my thing is you say the bar is low, and it is a low bar, but that's also our expectation, which, again, is one. Yeah. I'm not extraordinarily... I'm not shocked. I'm not stunned. I'm saddened. But that is our expectation. And, again, it's better than it was, but it's still the expectation yeah. that our heroes are usually men and our storytellers are usually men we let them be you know it's it's what it has been it's not like it should be right but that's what it is so when Thelma and Louise came out it was huge because it was two women yeah and they were carrying the movie Mm -hmm. um sure you had Harvey Keitel and a few other guys but they were really peripheral Mm -hmm. and that was shocking it shouldn't have been shocking in whatever 80 1980 whatever it was it shouldn't have been shocking but it was yeah and it was unique. The fact is that, yeah, it improves a little, but it's not improving quickly. And that's on every level. That's not just movies. That's everything. There's yeah. this this whole idea that the person that we trust to tell us what we need to know mm-hmm. is a deep-voiced so, penis so person. Even, <laughs> so even, even movies that are just meant for girls, right? So the Renaissance period <laughs> of the Disney princess uh-huh. genre, right? Mm-hmm. Which you could have a... I'm sure a very valid argument about why Disney princesses should not be role models for young girls. But Mm -hmm. put that debate aside for a moment. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them from 89 to 99, which is considered to kind of be the Renaissance period of the Disney princess. Every single one of these movies is male dominated. So men speak 68% of the time in the little mermaid. Okay. You know, she lost her voice, right? She did. Okay, she on. did. Don't want, I'm just um, saying that that's not but, really fair. Well, except that you know half the world is still populated by women, even when she lost her voice. You know, I mean, so the, could there have been other female characters she could have met along the way? Maybe. You but know, she couldn't talk basically, to him. She couldn't talk to him, but they could talk back mm-hmm. and they could have conversations. The fact is that once she lost her voice, the whole the rest of the movie. But also, the everyone plot of it was that she, the whole plot was for her to get a man. And now, granted, that's what a lot of plots are exactly. when your women are in exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. But yeah. Anyway, move on. All right. On. Belle in Beauty and the Beast did not lose her voice. 71% of the dialogue is from men. 76% of the dialogue uh, in Pocahontas is from men. 77% in Mulan. Now, Mulan was counted as a woman the entire time. Even when she was impersonating a man, they counted her as and, But female. if you look at those, the, and again, there's another show where Disney movies. Yeah. When you look at all of those, there are these her- heroines surrounded by men. Yes. Always surrounded by uh-huh. men. Because, again, who is it we trust to get our information exactly. from? And they all have mentors. And are there mm-hmm. mentors women? Never. Ever? No. Never. No. It's like, you know, Never. Mulan had the little dragon voiced by Eddie Murphy. Mm-hmm. The Little Mermaid had the little crab. Mm-hmm. You know, Sebastian. Mm-hmm. Um, Belle had the clock and the Mrs. Potts was the only girl. And, well, no. Sure. This is Potts and the chest of drawers. Who had two lines. Who had, Joanne Worley had two, two lines. Uh, no, I mean, it, when I'm looking at these, I'm like, these are all, there was a heroine. Honestly, Mulan, there were no other women there. There was her mother. Yep, and her grandmother. And her grandmother at the beginning. But once she left, it was all men. Yep. It was Donny Osmond and a lot of other people. Okay, so here's, ready to get super duper depressed? No, Here we go. not really, but please. Okay, if you look at only, only, the top 2,500 top grossing films. Uh, which basically mean any movie that made over $45 million domestically. From when? What are your dates? From the beginning of time. Okay. Like from American film. Okay. Right? In today's dollars, $45 million or more. Okay. Over half of those movies were those in which men spoke 80% of the time or more. So the median kind of dialogue split there was 80% male, 20% female. That is so sad. <laughs> I mean, and I don't even yeah, have anything, yeah. I have nothing pithy to say about that, yeah. because it's just so damn sad. Yeah. So they had a list, and, and you can go to the Women's Media Center, and but we will put why? this on the blog. This this report is amazing, and it gets into a ton of shit, and we'll put it all on the blog. Um, but they had a whole thing of, like, all the, there was one movie, one, that had 100% female dialogue, 0% men. And you think it's the women from 1939, but it's not, because that didn't make enough money. It was this movie called Now and Then. Remember Now and Then? Yes. 
with Demi Moore and yes. Rosie O'Donnell, yes. and then it was like four yes. women, and then the four girls. Yes. And apparently there are no men in this movie. Okay. Because men right. had zero percent of right. the dialogue. Twenty movies had dialogue that was one hundred percent male, <laughs> including Space Jam. No women mm, in Space Jam. No women. Schindler's List. I was not. A, I didn't remember that that there was not a single. I didn't realize that either. And if there were any women, they had less than one percent of the dialogue. All clearly, together. right? You know, all together. Saving Private Ryan. No girls. No girls. I mean, all at war. Yes, yeah, but I no. mean, you know, I remember there was the mom, but she doesn't talk. She just faints <laughs> when she gets the news that she has one kid left. The Shawshank Redemption. There are no women in the Shawshank Redemption. I mean, none. You know, at least, I mean, not that that even got up to 1% of the dialogue in that film. 100% But, you know, when dialogue. you look at this, it going with, with movies particularly, is that, so let's go back to when I'm saying, you know, men say, okay, we've got men stuff to talk about. Don't worry your pretty little head. So they, they separate and keep the women from being educated and they, you know, because they need to take care of the kids in the home. So then it goes to, okay, the man is a breadwinner. He's the one who has the money. So he's going to go watch a movie. Well, you're not going to have a movie about women because what are they going to talk about? They're going to talk about shoes or recipes boys. or the kids. They're going to talk about boys. Not, well, okay, <laughs> but maybe. But it's also, the idea was, if you were a producer of a movie, I'm not going to make a movie men aren't going to want to watch because they're the ones who have the money. And the wives have to ask their husbands for the money anyway. So I'm going to make a movie that men want to see. Yeah. Because well, they're you know, the ones I who realize, have the power. I mean, I come from, you know, a, a slice of the male population in that I'm super duper gay. And, you know, one of my favorite movies of all time is All super About Eve. Super duper. Super duper. One of my favorite movies of, of all time is All About Eve. I'm going to make you define that at some point. Just wanna, just all About that. Eve was a movie where, I mean, definitely belongs to the women's picture, you know, genre. But basically, they spent the entire movie fighting about their careers. Now, they were actresses. Yes. It's not, you know, they weren't, it wasn't hidden figures. They weren't mathematicians at NASA. No. But, you know, I mean, so it was a, you know, but they were, you know, at the top of their game, and they were basically fighting for mm -hmm. professional stature. Yes. Yeah. And that was the movie, you know, and it, that, that doesn't seem like, and that was 1950. Mm-hmm. And so that just seems like, you know, and, it, and it's definitely an old movie. And there's nothing particularly enlightened about it when you watch it. It's campy. It's bitchy. It's, no. you know, I mean, it's, it's got some great dialogue. two women going after each other, which you would hope that they'd lift each other up. <clears> and, and stay, you know, that's what we want now is for women to lift each other up. They also have, a, you know, down. she also has a friend. Margot has a friend. She does. does lift her up. You she know, does. So there's, there's some Except, of that. You know, but the friend's not as popular. I mean, it's not yes. as successful as she is. And then there's so. Marilyn Monroe, who's just hilarious in that movie. She is. And, and. Again, that's another topic for another one because I <laughs> absolutely love Marilyn Monroe. And that's not sarcasm. That's, that's true. But I think that, yes, it was it was two women whose their career was their number one priority. Yeah. And that was odd. I and they had was, men in their lives. but They but, did, but they know. were they were really, you know, trophies. You know, and again, it's one of those where, yeah, it's a woman's movie. But I do have a problem because it is a matter of. The feeling that there can only be one <laughs> Highlander, yeah. there can only be one. Um, <laughs> so if Eve was going to be number one, then she had to. Well, and then take Betty down. Davis has that amazing monologue in the back of the car, where you know, at the end of your life, if there's not someone sleeping next to you, then you're just a series of press clippings in a drawer. You're not really a woman if there's not a man next. Well, to you. And, and unfortunately, I mean, so there's there's some have, dated stuff in that movie, stuff. and and that's uh, there are there are so many movies. That are great, and you're just like, this is a wonderful movie, and how how uh, for looking that or future looking that that mm. this movie is um, for the 30s or the 40s, and then they'll have that, they'll have something, yes, but it doesn't mean anything if I don't have a child or whatever, <laughs> and you're like, oh man, you had a good yeah. movie and a good so. character, and so yeah, <laughs> but you know that it was written by a man, but it was, it was written, written by, by a, man. a man, it was written by a man, but it was also, I think, probably fairly indicative of how a lot of women in 1950 actually felt, and the whole arc of that film, if you want to look at it in this way, is that when she finally just decides that her career on the stage is not the only thing about her life that should she should be paying attention to. She's finally like, give the new play to Eve. I don't care. Okay, now here's what I'm going to... I'm going to disagree a little bit on that. Okay, yes, women... A lot of women felt that way. But what happened... The, the problem is that 
and Hollywood was pushing this. And this is where, when I talk about sometimes Hollywood's on the good side of history and sometimes it's mm. on the bad side of history. Yeah. And in this way, I felt like they were had some propaganda that was not really in the right side in that after World War II, uh, the men came back and the women were in their jobs. And the women were said, okay, guys are back now, so you can go. It's kind of like a league of their own mm-hmm. when they got, you know, it's like the real baseball players are here. Y'all can go home kind of thing. There are a lot of women who are like, whoa, I just learned all these new skills. I don't want to go back to cleaning and mm-hmm. all of this stuff. And so what happened is that Hollywood was, you know, again, I don't have any phone calls that are recorded, but the, you know, it, that they everybody was kind of like okay we need to get the women back to where you know they're sex objects and that they're they're women that they yep. are having children and they're taking care of the men because we've got you know we want to be good to our servicemen and so you have that's why you had at the end of this you know the woman she might look like she wants a career for you know uh, seven eighths of the movie but at the end she's like but you know at the end of the day. My legacy is really how good a wife and mother I was. <laughs> and but that's what they were doing is they it was just slowly trying to, you know, say yeah. to women, this is what you really want. See, it's what she did. So it's not that women were were necessarily thinking that, but they were certainly being told that they sure. should think I that. I can see that. In defense of all about Eve a little bit. She's just as sassy at the end as she is at the beginning. That great you know, you can always put your award that you know yes. where your heart should be. And uh, and there's no indication that she's given up her career. No, you know, there's and, not. And, and you don't I see them get married and it's not, you know, And I wasn't goes, speaking specifically yeah. about all about Eve, but just the genre sure. at that yeah. time no, when you're talking it. about the late forties and the early fifties, um, one reason that, you know, if you look at the and again when we're talking about women in pop culture, you talk about historically, what was the perfect woman in Hollywood, in movies? And so for the 30s and 40s, it was the thin, waifish, you know, woman who didn't necessarily do much physical whatever, but she was, she looked lovely in a dress that just, you know, mm-hmm. hung on her on the bias kind of thing and, and was very thin and little. And then after the war, suddenly we've got Jane Russell, we've got Marilyn Monroe, we've got Jane Mansfield. We've got all these women who are huge hourglass figures mm-hmm. to to be politically correct, but very very buxom and some they've got a lot of curves. Mm-hmm. And it's not coincidence that was happening is that because the idea was this is what is important in a woman not you know it, it, we need her to be nursing the children and feeding our men it and and i so i think it all goes together yeah. and we don't need her to be smart some like you know marilyn monroe made her whole career playing dumb blondes you know Jane brilliantly Ru- but yeah. yeah 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 but my whole thing is they weren't offering her the doctor so-and-so on any kind of movie at all. (laughs) But, I mean, because that's not what people wanted from her. When she tried to veer away from that, you know, it didn't work. But then when you look at, but again, when you look at how movies are being made today, when you go through all this depressing statistics about how little we hear women speak, you have to ask yourself, has much changed? No, not nearly as much as it should have. And that's why when you're sitting here saying in, you know, 2016 that only half of them passed the Bechdel test, test. that's very sad that we have come not that far at all from back in the day. But as I said, if you're going to go to that specific time period that you were talking about, obviously have some very strong opinions about how, why that was going on Mm -hmm. there. But again, it's the whole idea of who are women? What is their place here? And it's never the idea that that women and men are equal is such that even that sh- the idea that that's a debate is so ridiculous to me. But that is that is that is sure. a, a philosophical concept that we're discussing right now, but it's discussed all over the place. And that, you know, even women, which drives me nuts, but men, you know, it's like, what do you mean they're equal? Why wouldn't they be? But they're but again, I, I, I do. I think it goes all the way back. Because women yep. can give birth. <laughs> and, you know, so so we see it reflected, right? So there's this this report from the Women's Media Center. We are going to put that on our blog. It's got a ton of data that we don't have time to get into today. But it's all about how, A, how women skew older in entertainment, while or, or skew younger in entertainment, rather, than, than uh, while men tend to skew older. Um, a lot more women in their 20s are seen 
uh, on film and TV as sure. opposed to, to older men. Sure. Uh, breakdowns by ethnicity. So, hint, hugely white. I mean, sure. you know, when, when you talk about the the, uh, uh, the trouble that women have being represented on screen, you talk about women of color, it's even huger. Because, yeah, because you got to have, you got, it, it's, it's trickle down. You've got to have the producers, you've got to have the writers, you've got, they all have to be at a place where they can get their projects done. Yeah. And it's it's just been very very hard for anybody to break in yeah. break through. And this report also gets into you know how women are sexualized on film. You know how often they have nude scenes, how often they're you know made sexual remarks about, and hint a lot yeah. as compared yep. to yep. Yep. As compared to men. So we don't have time to get into all that. But it's 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 if you're interested in this stuff and you want some yeah. data to back up this yeah. stuff, uh, we will definitely put that on our blog. So, so uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to dip into probably not as, as deeply as we did the movies, but also the TV <laughs> and the... And... Everybody went, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about how this also plays out in, in music and, and on TV. There's, there's a little bit more data to share. None of it all that happy, really, unfortunately. <laughs> so we hope you come back. <laughs> Take your so off. Come on back. Wondering what room you've stumbled into? Don't mind the scalpels. You're in the Poparation Room with Eric and Stacy. All right, so <laughs> we're talking about women in pop culture, yeah. and you know it doesn't feel like it's a lot of good news here. No, no, uh, you know, and yet but I that's think... not fair. It, that's not fair. I mean, this when you look at statistically, it seems awful <laughs> <laughs> you know when you look at we talk about the movies and how many lines compared to men yep. and the sexualization compared to men and and parts and opportunities compared to men it, it's it it sounds awful on the other hand there are certain movies that come out that you know it's it's shocking and i made mention of, of thelma and louise and that's a, a while ago but, you know, even since then, movies that have some stories that, that, you know, back in the day would not have been put out there. Now, I think where there is a big jump in that, as opposed to movies and even television, would be music. Mm -hmm. I feel like there that women have a little bit more strength, if you will, for want of a better word, of being able to, or maybe there's more women who have the opportunities I don't know. I just feel like, for example, well, one, thing Beyonce, about, one thing about musicians as opposed to actresses, right, is that they're they're just they're themselves, you know. So you don't have to wait for, you know, a, a there's no audition. You just you are who you no are, audition. and you can write your own music, and you can do it. And hopefully, though, then you have to get a producer and somebody some to put do, it out some there. Some do, some don't. But you also don't have to depend on these male directors and screenwriters to actually That's write true. something for you to do. That's right. You can That's kind of true. chart your own path. Right. And yet, and yet. In music, women get most of the headlines. They get most of the magazine covers. And you look at kind of how mm -hmm. women musicians are kind of displayed. You see a lot more women. They're yep. very visible. But men still dominate sales. More music is downloaded by male artists than by women artists by a lot. Of the three top ten albums of 2015, or out of the top ten, rather, only three were from female artists. Uh, Adele, Beyonce, and Rihanna had each had albums in the the top 10 mm -hmm. all others were male artists either bands or male vocalists that were all men um back in 2014 beyonce was the only female artist in the top 10 that was it so nine out of the 10 were you know those are sales you know and and so that's i guess kind sometimes of, you know, i feel who's like making the money right and and okay three in the top 10 for what did you say that was 2015 like 2015 okay but i mean there were years in the past where you know, depending, you know, at one point, you know, Cher and Madonna were in the top ten sure. for a long time. and They again, were there, and I just wonder now, how many men having surrounded said that, them. Having said that, that's still, okay, having said that, exactly, it's still, you're still talking about 70% are men. So why is that? You know, I, and it's interesting because, you know, singing is not a typically masculine activity. You know, I mean, like young men in high school or, you know, if, if you want to play the guitar, that's one thing. But, like, somebody who wants to sing... That's not considered a very manly thing to do, and yet we still seem to be uh, well, going it... towards these male artists, even in the music world. And and, I, and it's interesting because for me, you know, I was just playing a bunch of music before you got here, and I turned on kind of my typical playlist of just what I listen mm -hmm. to, and I noticed that like probably on my particular music musical tastes, mm -hmm. 
probably six out of every seven songs are a woman singing mm-hmm. because I listen to these divas, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> um, um, do you think it matters? Sexuality? Probably. Yeah. Oh, oh, I definitely think it matters around, you know, gay men love their divas. And we can do a whole show about the connection between... And probably will, because it sounds fun. And probably will. You know, gay men and their divas and what makes a diva and what doesn't. That could be an interesting kind of... But I'm just like, so does this go back to the whole idea that we trust a deeper voice kind of thing? I don't know. Because really, songs are usually about the stories that they're telling. And songs are usually about romance. So is that what it is? Is that there's, you know... you know, I don't know. I don't understand that. Yeah. I don't understand that at all because, and then these three, Adele, Beyonce, and Rihanna, are awesome. Yep. And they're really good storytellers and have interesting stories mm-hmm. to tell. But there's more than that. There's more of that. You know, that's just, that's just surprising to me. Yeah. Because I do find myself listening to more women than I do men. Mm-hmm. There's some that I do. I mean, I'm not saying no men, but there, I, I do find myself, I'll be honest with you, I like hearing songs that I can sing to. So usually it's going to be an alto, a woman with uh-huh. an alto voice, because yeah. I can't hit those high, high notes. Yeah. But that's what that's what I tend to veer yeah. towards. So then I'm saying, okay, if we all kind of veer toward that which we are familiar with, is that what it is? Are there more men buying the songs? They might be. I don't know. But you look at, you know, there's the, the folks, that, you know, Bruno Mars, you know, those, and he was like one of the uh, ones. And the time, again, know. there's those songs. Those are fun, you know, dancey yeah. songs. So I like mm-hmm. that. And I, you know, on the way over here, I was, you know, Kiss came on uh, with Prince. Okay. Love that. Yeah. But, and, you know, I, I don't know. I, this is, that's a weird statistic for me. And women getting the most of the headlines and magazine covers, yeah, 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 I get that. Because a pretty girl is going to appeal to both, uh, both sexes. Yep. Yeah. And, and so I get that. But the out the music I don't I you know unless yeah. men just really can't empathize at all and cannot get the female <laughs> thing and well, so it no might men be. buy it might be I mean it women. might be that that women enjoy listening to women who you know are basically singing about their side of their relationship woes because most songs are either I'm so in love with you or you broke my heart I mean mm-hmm. those are kind of the most mm-hmm. songs are about romance that right. tends to be the subject matter that right. pop music kind of revolves around. And yeah, you know, and maybe when a man sings about his side of the story, both men and women are interested. And when a woman sings about her side of the story, really only the women want to hear because it. Because women are empathetic and, and men really only care about themselves. <laughs> well, and men I'm not have... saying that's a fact. <laughs> I'm saying that's a theory. <laughs> you just put that knife down. Um, but I, I do think in... In, in some sense that men are trained that, you know, we're all trained that way, right? You know, I think there's this hunger to see ourselves recognized or reflected in that the art which we expose ourselves to, whether it's television or, or music or movies. But there's also, you know, so I think that's being fed by both of these. But there's also this sense of, you know, men are ne- aren't necessarily taught that they need to understand what women are going through. You know, I, I saw this yeah. really brilliant documentary a while back called I Am Not Your Negro, and it was about <gasps> James Baldwin. Yes, and I thought that I didn't see the, I didn't see it, but I'd heard so many good things. I was kind of yeah. surprised it didn't win the Oscar. Yeah, 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 it should have. But it, it, at one point, he basically, James Baldwin basically makes the point about white people, I know a lot more about you than you know about me. Mm-hmm. And it's because I have to. Yep. And I imagine it's probably the same for women in a lot of ways. You know, women probably know a lot more about men than men know about women. And there's always this thing about, gosh, women are so hard to understand. They're so mysterious. And it was like, well, maybe you could just listen when they talk. Mm-hmm. That might be a way that you could perhaps bridge that. Well, divide. a lot of, you know, there's just the one, it's not an anecdote, but it's it's and it's an example of how men and women deal with, with certain things. And, it's, and it goes back to being anthropological, I think, to an extent, in that if I come to you crying, I have a problem. What is what is the reaction from whichever sex? If it is a woman, um, she's going, you know, and again, I'm not saying this is across the board. This is the idea is a woman is going to sit there and listen to you. You know, what is the problem? Mm-hmm. And listen to how, you know, where you are about it, what the issue is. That's going to be, and, and offer some sympathy. Mm-hmm. Whereas a man, uh, the idea is that you, he says, what is the problem? Here's how we're going to solve it. Mm-hmm. So it's not a matter of I am listening to your problem so that I can help you feel better. Yep. I'm listening to your problem so I can help you fix it. Yep. 
And sometimes, you know, the, the, the old adage is that women don't necessarily need you to fix their problem. They just need you to hear. Mm -hmm. And I think that men, and, and sometimes I don't think it's necessarily some sure are jerks, but some it's just, it's just a matter of they didn't learn how to do that. They didn't yeah. know that that was something that, you know, they're, they're trying to help you. Their feeling is if I fix the problem, then I've helped you. Yeah. And so I think that, but I'm not interested necessarily in all the whys and wherefores because I can't sympathize. And, and it's, I, I it's don't know, nature, that that? it's nature versus nurture in a lot of ways, you know, and, and so it's, and I, it's an open question for me. But I definitely think that men are rewarded for saying, well, here's how we're going to fix it, as opposed to, gosh, I really hear you. I can really, you know, I can really empathize with that. Correct. Um, whereas because women you... are rewarded for being nurturing. empathetic and nurturing yes. and listening. And, you know, that's that's what moms do. Right. I mean, moms don't always solve every problem, you know, and, and that's no, moms, when you're raising a child. A, no. You don't necessarily give your child all the answers. You yeah. you, you hold you them and, hold let, them them and cry. let them cry, and and hopefully let them figure it out for themselves. Correct. You know that's kind of what Correct. this whole mothering thing yeah. is. Whereas dads, what's the typical role of a dad? Is I'm gonna fix it. Yeah. So, and does that does that relate back to why men you yeah, know sell more records is, than women? I don't yeah, know. I don't, I don't know, know. But that's an interesting. Is that if women are more prone to buy, you know, they're they'll listen to both because one is more is relatable to them, and the other one is. Oh, so that's how they think about that. Mm -hmm. Whereas men are, oh, yeah, that's exactly how I feel about that. And the other one is, oh, she's just whining. Yeah. Or they're threatened by it because, you know, when a man sits because down Because women to... can have babies. I tell you, this <laughs> is the crux of it all. Well, I, you know, and so here's here's a line that I just love. We, we talked about it in another show that we did recently. When Beyonce says in formation, when he fucked me good, I'm going to take his ass You just want to say that line. I do. I do want to say that say line over and over and over. Episode. But no, but I think it's really, I think there's something there. Because the idea is she can be satisfied or not. And I don't think men want to hear that. Oh, you know? that's what I'm saying to you. Is it's is that if, 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 if. So if a woman is give, too strong. If I don't they're think, strong and they can have children. And I don't think then I, what yeah. am I here for? Well, I, I am think, just a sperm donor. And I, I don't think. <laughs> and I don't think men also want to hear Madonna say, you know, I'm looking to, for you to justify my love. Like, you know, basically, it's like step up, dude. That's right. They, you know, a lot of the songs that women sing are are a lot of them about female empowerment, and that's subversive in its mm -hmm. own way. Um, and so maybe that's part of it too. We're going to wrap up uh, by talking about TV. Yeah. So we've yep. been through movies. We've been through. Yep. Uh, we've been through music. I mean, a lot of the, the TV thing is this, you're, you come up against a lot of the same stuff as the movies thing, as far as producers and having the opportunities yeah. to create projects that are female centric or female empowering or or that sort of thing. I mean, recently, here's an example of this. So recently, big headlines. I don't haven't read the story. Big headlines. Big Bane Theory. Mm -hmm. Which I'll be honest, not a fan, but it's a huge, huge hit. It's yeah. a huge, huge show. But several, it looks like the male stars are giving up some of their salary so the female stars, two of the female stars, can get raises. Good for them. Okay, here's here's I, here's here's my thing about this. One, yes, good for them. Good for them because it is a team effort. That is an ensemble mm -hmm. show of everything. What if yeah. anything is an ensemble show? It's Big Bang Theory. Yeah. But here's my problem. Big Bang Theory makes so much money. Are you seriously telling me that the actors have to give up money in order for you to give money to these other two part of your ensemble? I I I think that's bullshit. I call yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Because I think you could raise their salaries and keep the other guys the same. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. So I'm I'm mad at the producers about that. But I do think it's good. Yeah. That, but but the fact that it has to happen. Well, and this of course happened with Friends, right? Now Friends never now, got Friends, to this point because all six of them locked arms correct. and said, "Lisa Kudrow you will said, pay us here's all the deal." The same. Lisa Kudrow started it. The, I, the rumor mm -hmm. is that Lisa Kudrow, and I believe it because she is, that bitch is smart and fierce. <laughs> um, but she said, "We got to stick together as six, and we can't, we cannot ever we can't budge. budge because they need all six of us. If one of us goes." They can do the five. Mm -hmm. They can survive probably even if two or three leave. 
They cannot survive if all six leave. Yeah. And that was the, the united front is what they had to put yeah. out there. And they did. And so at the end of it, they were getting, I don't know, how many million, one or two million a, sh- a yeah. show. Yeah. It may have been a million a show for every show. But all six of them all were being six of them paid were a million exactly. Each. Exactly. So no but again, that, that is unusual. And what happened with Big Bang Theory is also unusual uh, for any actors to give up stuff. But they they have to know when you're in an ensemble thing, it really is everybody is important yeah. uh, at that so point. So speaking of ensembles, yes, in the 2015-2016 television season, mm-hmm. you ready for this? Mm-hmm. 79% of TV shows on broadcast, cable, and streaming – Featured casts with more male than female characters. So almost four out of five, the men outnumbered the women. Five percent of these shows offered ensembles with equal numbers of. So this would be Friends, right? Friends would but have friends been Friends was not, but if, but if, but if, but this is like the Friends formula, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Three men, three women. Five percent. Sixteen percent had casts that had more women than men. Mm. Which, in that 16%, you've got stuff like, you know, Orange is the New Black, mm-hmm. Girls, mm-hmm. you know, stuff mm-hmm. like that. And and to me, I guess, you know, a, a conversation about women in TV in 2017 has to kind of be about what's going on in TV in 2017, just writ large. And to me, the biggest thing about TV nowadays is there's way too much TV. Like, that's not a... And that's not you a, mean a, too many choices? Too many choices. There's too much good TV. I mean, I can't tell you how oh many times gosh. people my say DVR to me, "My DVR is at seventy nine percent." You gotta watch this show. Are yeah, you I watching Blankety Blank? And I'm like, yeah. "No, I don't have time." Like, no, because you know, I mean, I can only watch binging, so many shows. There's the binge shows mm-hmm. like uh, Orange Is the New Black or and and um, uh, that DC one, uh, Cards House of Cards. There's you know or Transparent. There's yep. all these uh, Netflix and uh, Amazon. Amazon both have these binge yep. ones. Man in the High Castle. Yep. Right, right. So there's that. So that's what are they about six, uh, seven episodes? Sometimes eight, sometimes ten. Okay, so let's let's go with you know ten episodes. Let's say they're an hour a pop. So that's an hour, that's a hundred. What's it? Ten times was it a hundred hour? No. Yeah. Well, it could no. be ten hours, twelve 10 hours, hours of TV. Ten. That, yeah. Ten, Jesus, my math. Ten hours. That's ten hours, right? Ten out. Ten out. Ten hours. Okay, out of a day. <laughs> and then my DVR, seriously, it's at about 79% yeah. most of the time yeah. because I watch stuff and sometimes I'm just watching stuff to get rid of it. <laughs> seriously, I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm like, okay, I gotta, I'm going to zip through this puppy. And, I'm, and so am I enjoying it? Am I getting all that I can? No, not really. <laughs> I just got to get it off my damn yeah. DVR because I have something else that's no, going to record. Yeah. Everyone's talking about This Is Us, which I understand is a really, really great show. Yeah. I have not I seen know. it. Everybody is talking about um, it. I don't have time. It, it, nothing about know. that show, but it's just like, you know, maybe I'll binge it later. But I don't have busy. time. That is one reason, but I will be honest with you. That is not anything I want to see. It's a, it's a soap opera. It's, it's oh, like, is it really? I, I think so. I, I haven't seen it. No, I can't tell you it is a soap okay. opera. It looks like a soap opera. It just me. makes everybody cry. That's what I'm saying. It's, if it may, it's like Parenthood did that too. And I saw the movie Parenthood. And it made me tear up a little bit, but I laughed more than I cried. Uh-huh. And then they're like, Parenthood makes you cry all the time. And I'm like, oh, hell, I live Parenthood. I don't need to be, <laughs> you know, I can cry in my normal day. Why would I then watch something to make me cry? Okay, we're going we're gonna to do another show about crying and stuff. Yeah. Because I enjoy crying at the movies and I TV do not. a lot more than you I do. I do not. It makes me a mad. But my, it's my thing gender is, subversive in its own way. But but therein, therein lies, you know, the rub is that who is, who, and, and television is all business. Yeah. So it is all ruled by the advertisers and who is, you know, if that's why Big Bang Theory is still on. But then again, I have to say, who is watching? Yep. So no, I can't, there is, so, you're right, yeah. there is a plethora of stuff to watch. So within and that, stuff. so within that, you mm-hmm. know, if you are, so I watch Orange is the New Black. Every mm-hmm. time a new season comes on, I watch right. it. And so I get a lot of women on TV. I do. But I choose to watch that show. Mm-hmm. You know, in a way, I think it, it, life might have been a little. Well, you could talk about how pop culture really influences influences society, and be a little bit more direct about it in the days of All in the Family, when everybody watched that show there because were there were channels. only three there channels. Were three channels. You know, and that was all you could get. Now yeah. you've got so much. Yeah. It really, people get into their bubbles, you know, and they watch the shows that really reflect the world they live in and yes. whatever bubble they happen to yes. be in. And so 
it's not to say there aren't plenty of amazing performances by women on television. Correct. No, no, no. You know, that you can see if but you're interested if you... in doing it. But when you look at, right. like, what's well, on television about, writ large. Um, so, so Orange is the New Black, which is, we're virtually all women. So there's... With the, some guards. Right, but I'm just saying that there's the majority. But you look at, for example, How to Get Away with Murder. So it does have a strong female lead. And it has some good female, but there's a lot of guys in there. Mm-hmm. You look at Scandal. Yep. Female lead, a lot of guys in there. And Melly. And again, there's some women, but again, but it, it's it's that thing that you have these women, but then they're surrounded yeah. by all of these men. And to... that's those are TV shows where Shonda Rhimes is like leading the whole. She's the showrunner, right? I know. I now, know. so listen to this. Behind the scenes on TV, women comprise 26% of creators, directors, writers, producers, executive producers, editors, and directors of photography working on all of these programs. That makes no sense. 50% of our society are women. And the fact that only a, we're only represented by a quarter of the creators. And again, that goes back to my thing about opportunities mm-hmm. uh, to, have, to have projects that show more. And I think, you know, Shonda got these shows on the air and they are hits. But they're, you know, and those two that I just mentioned are two black women. Yeah. As their leads. But and she that's had a to big get there step. through Grey's Anatomy. She got She got she there got through the a white, white girl, girl, but you know. it was a white it was a woman. Yeah. It, was it was a woman. A woman. <laughs> She's gray. So it was a woman. Again, surrounded by a lot of guys. But at the same time, it's one of those where sometimes you have to go, you know, baby steps. Yep. Baby steps. So I get my show about this white woman as the lead. That's crazy because it's a woman as the lead. and But, you know, I'm surrounded with men, so people will watch. Mm-hmm. You know, boys will watch. So then you go to a black woman scandal, yep. but a white president, and you have that scandal there. Mm-hmm. There's a sexual stuff going on there. Yep. And still more other men surrounding her, but clearly she's a strong woman. And then yep. you're able to go to How to Get with Murder where uh, she is definitely the strong woman there. And, you know, a lot of the guys that are in there are her students or whatever. Yep. They're, you know, secondary. So, again, it may be at some point she's able to get to where it's a woman <laughs> with a lot of women around who are strong and have a couple of trophy boys around. You know? <laughs> and not that every TV show has to be that way, but there are so many shows. No, where but there's no reason why with all of these shows out there that there, can be that there like can that. be some more yeah. of that. The yeah. idea that you have to put them in prison you know, and have all of that is a that, to make it well. That's the only way we can really rationalize having all these women in here. Are you kidding me? You know, or you know, sister wives bullshit. I mean, it's always something. Yeah. But I, you know, I think that hopefully we are moving in a good way. And I mm-hmm. think sometimes TV gets there faster than movies. Yeah. But it is. You're right. There is. There are because so the behind the scenes data for film is is probably it may, worse. it'll make me sad, and I don't want to. I don't want to. It's talk in about the it report. Anymore. It's in the report. It'll be on the blog. Okay, awesome. So final prognosis: women in popular culture. Stacy, go. Well, you know what? It's it's. Mm, I'm putting this in, with asterisks all over it. It's getting better. Uh, it is better than it was. I do think there is, you know, a waxing and a waning of of this type of thing culturally. So, but I do think it is getting better and big picture, as long as our country stays free, then, you know, and democratic, then, you know, we'll be able as, you know, society to to move toward that. That's a really big (laughs) if right now. It's a really big if. Anyway, but that's, I I think it is, I like to be optimistic. And so I look at it and I say, you know, 20, 26% is better than 2% 40 years ago, you know? So it's better. Not great. Not fast enough. Uh, you know, and African Americans would say, "Yeah, we're with you, not fast enough." But I, again, I, you know, there's just misogyny is is a big deal, and I think it's it's out there, and I think that the, the popular culture just shows it yeah. that the, what what is out there and, and yeah. what we're dealing with, and and I'm just saying. Yeah, and I guess what my, about what you? Well, my, I guess my only final words on that would be, you know, I'm glad that we have this stuff to study because the data around popular culture is a lot easier to discover than the data around life, right? I mean, how many lines do we, do each of us get during our daily existence? You know, we don't even notice it with the movies. We probably don't notice it in our world, but yet someone took the time to count all this stuff so we can actually see this is what's reflected back to you. And it's kind of shocking. 
So, you know, kudos and we to accept it. Yeah. kudos to the Women's Media Center yeah. and and other folks like that for putting out No, it's all true. These we reports. need to know this information so that we can then change it. You can't change what you don't know is going on. Yeah. So, so now we know it. And now, we know. Uh, now we're all a little yeah. bit smarter and a little bit more depressed. Yeah. Thanks for that. But you know what? Here's <laughs> no, here's an upside. Here's my, here's my thing. I feel like probably you may have talked a little more during this episode, but not that much more. No, I think you definitely had at least half the lines. So there you go. Yeah. So we're working on it. <gasps> One show at a time. There you go. <laughs> You've been listening to Poperation with Eric and Stacy. Check out our website at poperationroom.com for links to our blog and other extras. Don't forget to subscribe to Poperation via iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, and other podcast locations. You can also follow at Poperation Room on Facebook and Twitter. Music provided by purpleplanet.com.